Our scripture reading today comes from Psalm 31, verses 1 to 5, and then 15 and 16. Let us listen for God's word. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God, open my mouth that I may proclaim your praise. Silence in us any voice but your voice, so that in hearing we may be obedient to your will. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. In times of fear and uncertainty, it is our nature to seek out strength and safety. If a building is burning, most of us will run away from it, not run towards it. If we see a bear in the woods, most of us will back off slowly, hoping the bear is not too hungry. If we are aware of a deadly virus that enters our body through our mouths and our noses, most of us will wear a mask, because most of us have an instinct for survival. And unless we have a vocational call to serve in an emergency room or as a first responder, we will choose to be in a safe place. That is the smart thing to do, it is the prudent thing to do, and it is the right thing to do. For people of faith, God fits the role as the one we go running to in times of need especially when the enemy chasing us is powerful. We ask God to be our protector, our shield, and our refuge. We don't need God to chase a mosquito from the room. We can do that ourselves, but sometimes we cannot seem to shake our enemies. They cling to us, and they won't let go, and we need God to untangle us from the net that our enemies hold over us. These enemies have names like racism and nationalism. These enemies have characteristics like self-righteousness and greed. These enemies have contempt for tolerance and kindness. These enemies have weapons like fear and falsehood. And these enemies know no shame. They heap contempt on us and on God and they will say or do anything for power. And if it was just us against them, we would be in a sorry state. Because alone we can chase away a mosquito from the room, but we cannot chase away a bear. But the good news I bring today is the same good news that has been in the world since the very beginning. It is the good news that we are not alone. We have an advocate. We have a defender. We have someone on the side of goodness and righteousness and love. The psalmist speaks to this hope today, saying, In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. Sometimes all we need is a reminder that we are not alone. Today is that reminder. 
The Lord is our rock and our fortress. The Lord will lead us and guide us. For God is our refuge. And so don't ever forget. Don't ever give in because God has us in hand. Remember God and always be at peace. Today we also remember our mothers in a similar way. At least those of us who had mothers who would fight a bear to protect us. My mother has six kids, and though I should have been the favorite for obvious reasons, she treated us all equally, which means that she was always there for each of us, to assure each of us that everything would be fine. After she had given birth to four of us, she saw the need to raise a couple more, and so we adopted my two younger brothers. My mother was the refuge and the gentle hand. When my dad wanted to do a pulpit exchange with a minister in Scotland, he made it happen, but my mother did the work, packing up six kids, feeding us in a British kitchen the size of a postage stamp, sitting in the church pew with all the kids while the beetle catered to my dad. My mother was the refuge and the gentle hand. In college, when tests were looming over me and the pressure was crushing me, she would say to me, oh, Bobby, you'll be fine. She had more confidence in me than I ever had in myself. She was the refuge and the gentle hand. And maybe your mother was the same, the one who brought comfort and confidence into your lives. And so today, we do more than just say Happy Mother's Day to our mothers. Today, we remember them as the giants in our lives. We remember all the times when enemies faced us, but our mothers protected us. We remember when they stood down the sicknesses and the stresses when they stood up to the pressures and the pranksters and when they swept away the enemies at the door and no one could barge past them to get to us. Today we remember who was our refuge and we remember the one who always holds us in hand. God bless our mothers. You know, in times of stress, we tend to forget things. On Thursday mornings, I'm always stressed out because that's the morning that I come in and I write my sermons. And I always seem to forget things. Thursday is the morning when I will inevitably leave my coffee at home or leave my sermon notes at home. Sometimes I'll bring my coffee, but then I'll leave it in the car when I get to church. Once I forgot the right keys and I couldn't get in the church. And it's not unusual for me to forget my phone or my wallet, and once in a while, I'll forget to wear a belt. Stress wreaks havoc on my ability to remember even the simplest of things. Now, these days, the whole world is under great stress, of course. We all feel the enemy creeping up beside us, wanting to take over our lives. We live under the constant strain of fear, we fear getting sick. We fear that our loved ones will get sick. We are afraid of the economic downturn. We fear the strife in our political system. And there is great stress right now about whether or not to return to work. I feel the pressure about how and when to open up worship to people. Most of it is internal pressure. No one's calling me and say, Hey, hi, Mac. I miss sitting in the front pews of the church. In fact, in 34 years of ministry, nobody's ever said that to me. But still, just the fact that our normal rhythm of life is wacky makes things stressful. It makes us forget things. We forget the comfortable feeling of sitting in these pews next to people who care about us. We forget the prayers that comfort us and the music 
that inspires us and the smiling faces that support us. We forget the invigorating discussions we've had at Christ Cafe and Slice of Life and our Bible studies. We forget that this, this church nourishes us with thoughts and ideas and hopes and joys. And unfortunately, the greater the stress, the more we forget. The more we forget God. In these stressful times when the weight of the world bears down upon us, the very thing that gives us refuge is the very thing we must not forget. We must not forget God. Way back in the most stressful times of Judaism, the prophets rose up and they reminded people of God. In the early days of the church, after the crucifixion of Christ, Peter and the apostles spoke up and they reminded people of God. In times of war, in times of plague, in times of pandemic, the church did what it does best when it reminded people of God. It said that the stress is real, but so is God. The danger is real, but so is God. The fear surrounds you, but so does God. Remember God and find some peace. Early on in this shutdown, Jenny and I said that we should clean out the storage bin in the basement where we park our car. We had plenty of time to do it, and things had been sitting in that storage bin ever since we moved to that building eight years ago. And so we said, yeah, let's do it. We were energized to clean. Well, that was eight weeks ago, and we still haven't touched it. Except last Wednesday, Jenny went down there to find something, and she came across an old wallet from my mom. She brought it to me, and I looked it through it, and there were old credit cards, Sears card, J.C. Penney, CVS card, an AARP card, a retired Indiana public employee card, on and on. And all of those cards made me remember my mom. Back in the day, she pretty much did it all. She traveled the world. She walked on every continent. And she was always our refuge, and she always held us in hand. I remembered her as she was, and I smiled. Well, the only storage bin I have for God are my thoughts, my faith, and the Bible. And so I read these words today from Psalm 31. And I remember, I remember that God is my refuge and God holds me in hand. I remember that no enemy, no stress, no pressure can overcome my rock and my fortress. I remember that my times are in God's hands. And I remember the words of the psalmist who wrote, let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. <clears throat> this God I remember. And I smile. I am not alone. I do not fear. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen.